Hey everybody, it's Heather here with another edition of Heather's Heart. It's really late. It's, <clears throat> excuse me, it's after 10 at night and I just kind of got caught up in painting. So this is my um, first entry in the First Thessalonians, Second Thessalonians series that Pastor Mike is doing at a Regeneration on Monday nights. Here's some of my messy paint water, watercolors and whatnot. And I was trying to make it like a medieval illuminated manuscript. It's not quite turning out that way, um, but that's okay. It's it's more of what I tend to do anyway. It's just kind of messy, messy fun painting. But he started out uh, on chapter one and it's about doing a good job. It's about being a man on a mission, a woman on a mission. Um, so these are some of my notes that I took, as you can see, I'm just kind of interspersing it. I used mostly Tombow markers here and then I started using watercolor paint and that's why it's smeared but I kind of like the effect um anyway these were my personal notes I love uh first Thessalonians 1 verse 3 um you know never give up hope as long as you have breath there's always hope uh, to do things differently to make a change and uh, Paul who started the church in Thessalonica during his second missionary journey is writing and just encouraged to see that the people were still doing what he taught them to do, um, making much of Jesus. And they continue to do the work that Paul started there. Who are you in Christ? And knowing who you are in Christ will help you when those difficulties come. Now, um, a practical note, because I didn't have my hair dryer with me, I am using paper towels to help dry it a little bit faster. But being on a mission, um, he defined your mission statement as it's something you do or that you're about. It's something you don't divert or vary from or else your mission is no longer your mission. So what will you do? Um, how will you achieve it? What's your God-given purpose? That is your mission in life. And how are you, what action steps are you going to take to make it happen? So then um, these were just some of the notes that I took as he was going through each verse. And I just kind of got a little free form with the paint. And I did use yellow and orange here, but I'm going to go back over with some red because I decided I like that a little bit better. But um, this is just typical of what I do for the most part when I don't have a real huge structure or agenda. I'm going to go back in, like I said, and fill it in with some Prismacolors. There's verse 7. There's verse 8. Uh, oops, my piece I got dried. There's verse 9. And then the last verse, verse 10. So um, it's a little messy. But you know what? It's okay. It's it's primarily when you do something like this. It's about spending time with the Lord, spending time in the Bible, um, learning to know what God has to say through his word to you. Um, the art comes secondary. So um, this one, I did all of this tonight. And I think next for this upcoming week, I'm going to do a little bit every day and just take more uh, time with it. But anyway, this is what I wanted to show you. So I'll do a quick flip through again because I think they have uh, dried enough for now. And this paper holds up surprisingly well, but you do need to let it dry uh, and don't get it wet because it's watercolor. So it's going to get, it's going to bleed everywhere if you take it outside and it gets in, caught in the rain. But those are my, that's my first entry, First Thessalonians chapter one. All right, everybody. Uh, love and hugs from the ocean shores of California.